I, I, I went over to the office for something. I was going through some things and I got come back. I looked in immediately. My wedding ring was gone. And, and I couldn't find it. Now you all probably never noticed that I've lost some weight in this past year. I've gone from the town to the uh, in this past year. And I lost the weight. I couldn't find it. I didn't know. I had to think and I had to think. I went home. I told my wife. I looked through the car. I looked everywhere. And then I thought the last place I remember having that ring on was when I walked out of here. But when I went out, I didn't have it when I come back. I went over in there and I looked, lying in a bunch of them, oh, there laid my ring. And you might say, Preacher Wright, you got along this morning. Because it's in the jeweler's office, he's going to make it so it'll fit. And so it costs you to lose weight. So be careful, I'm not sure. But where did I find it? I found that among things that didn't look like a man. I found that among things that I long broke, which was couldn't use for a ring at all. Listen, folks, let me tell you, where will you find Jesus? You'll find him right where you left him, and then he can restore your soul. And praise God, you can shout again. Now I'm going through one more, man. I get through them all. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Now I'm going to stop. It was all my cup run of over. I knew David was thinking about that day when he marched his brothers all marched before Samuel, before his dad, and before Samuel, Jesse and Samuel. And as they was rejected one by one, one by one, here's this little shepherd boy out tending the sheep. He was that boy. He was doing many things. He was just young, a little ruddy face with it. Shepherd boy, not like I look, I think. Probably. He might have been better looking than I was. I don't know how pretty his wife was. I didn't even that. But anyway, there he was, the little shepherd boy. Did anybody ever think that knew me before I got saved? Mitch and I ran across a man that I went to school with and got him out of the, out of the cemetery. He just stood and looked out and shook his head. He said, you're the last person on earth I thought would ever be a preacher. You know why? You know why? Because he didn't know the child that I am now. He just knew that old one. He knew that old one and got into all the little trouble he could get into. Talked to him when he could talk. Now he's found the new one because he restored my soul and praised God he anointed my head with oil and my cup run was over. David might have been remembering that day when that all the rest were rejected, but when that all of God began to top of his head and begin to roll down the sides of his cheek, he became special. He went from a shepherd boy to the throne, but thank God let me tell you, first he had to learn how to tend sheep before God would give him a kingdom. And then I think about the table. If you remember back in the book of Esther, when that Haman, he wanted all the Jews killed. He wanted favor with the king so bad. And he had ten sons. He had a wife who just as mean as he was. And so therefore, he wanted, Mordecai was a faithful man of God. He sat at the gate of the city. And when Haman would come by, you know, Mordecai wouldn't get up. He wouldn't recognize him. Because Haman went to, before the king and he talked the king into setting the decree. To kill Mordecai along with all the people, all the people that were Jewish in all the territories that they possibly get to. And so that day when uh, when Esther went in before the king, God had been dealing with him. And Esther, Esther walked up and went and was received by the king. He held out the scepter and she touched him. And when she walked in, and when coming to the presence of the king, and she said, O oh, king, he said, Whatever you want, half of my kid up to half of my kid. He said, I'll give it to you. She said, well, I want to I wanna prepare a banquet. I want to spread a big table, in other words. I want to put all the good things on it. And then, and then, well, I, I want you to invite <coughs> Haman. Haman was going to be there, so he invited him. And all the soul thing, a long story short, before it got too far along, Haman just couldn't stand Mordecai. But old king, as, as, as a seraph went to bed one night, in the middle of the night, he was troubled. And he got up and walked the floor. And God spoke to him. And he told his servant, go bring me the chronicles that have been written. He said, I'm going to read them. Something is troubling me. I don't know what it is, but bring me those chronicles. When he read those chronicles, he found that there was a man by the, by the name of Mordecai 
These people had planned to kill him and take his kingdom. And Mordecai had come and told him who it was, how it was going to happen, how it was going to be. And he walked that floor. And when he saw it, he looked to the people around him. And he said, what's been done for this man? What new thing has he received for saving my kingdom and my life? And they looked and said, nothing. He said, go bring that man. Oh, hallelujah. When she set the banquet, she got knew what to do. And who showed up at that banquet? Well, praise the Lord. Sitting around that table was not only King Osiris, not only Esther, but around that table, praise the Lord, was going to set Haman. <coughs> was going to set Mordecai. And because God, God had lifted Mordecai up from the sackcloth and ashes at the gate of the city and put him in the king's palace. I don't want you to know, praise God, he'll spread a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Haman was raw and he was bad. He and Esther went into the room where Esther was, lying upon the bed. He was so angry with Esther, he just simply sat down on the bed. There was no intent for anything. But when the king came in and he saw him on the bed with Esther, his anger rose and he said, Hang him! And so they went out and said, what to do with him? Said, go hang him on the gallow. His wife before told Haman, said, oh, go make a gallow and hang Mordecai on it. Well, they, and, and Haman was hanging from, from the rafter of that uh, uh, the gallows that he made. Mordecai, you know where he was at? He was sitting around the king's table. What did God say? He said, I will set the friend the table before you in the presence of thine enemy. Don't worry about your enemy. Praise the Lord. God's going to set a table right in the midst of them. And God's going to be there. And you're going to enjoy that table that God has supplied for you. Then quickly, quickly spread that table. I want you to know this morning, we're in here in fellowship, fellowship and harmony. I was talking to Mitch, I believe it was, or somebody yesterday. Uh, now, I know Mitch from somebody. It's just sometimes I can't, can't remember who I talked to. And uh, I said, you know, it's so wonderful when you go into church out there. I said, there's nobody sitting there. It's Mitch, I remember that. I said, there's nobody sitting there. But you have to lift your hand to shake hands with them. I say everybody's got their hand out. They got a smile on their face. They may not feel good. They may have sorrow in the time. But they got a smile. They're ready to love you. And you feel that connection of love and grace. When you're in trouble, like Will has been testifying last week, all they come together. I want you to know that we've got enemies around this Hickory Grove church this morning. You can't see them, and I can't see them. But there's a devil and a harem, a whole bunch of a demon's out here this morning trying the best to destroy this church. He'll go out in the world and try to destroy it tomorrow. Oh, but thank God, brother, let me tell you something. They can come every Sunday if they want to. They can linger outside, but we come in here and we spread the table. All they can do is sit there and lick their chops. We're the one eating. Hallelujah. We're the one getting fat. We're the one eating. And they've got a miserable barren field, and we're in the fields, but we're in the green pasture, and we're having a good time. Praise the Lord. And so, therefore, they spread a table in the midst of the enemy. And then Mordecai was brought in. His sack off the ashes, rolled and the disappeared. Now he was dressed to see a king. He was invited into the king's palace. Glory to God this morning. You might think you were enrolled in ashes. You might think that nobody wants anything to do with you. You might think that you're so filthy and dirty. I'm telling you this morning about a king that if you'll come here and accept him, you can sit around his table and praise God. You can wear the robes of royalty today. And not only that, his royal blood will flow through your veins. That's how much God loves you. Now they get a song and he pulls it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love this house. I love this church. I'm here every time it's open. I can't do. But I want to tell you, when I go outside of here, I'm still dwelling in God's house. Now, there was a Sunday school teacher one time teaching Sunday school about song. And she has surely goodness and mercy. And one of the little children, like one of the and her name was Murphy, and uh, Miss Murphy, and she's teaching.